Good morning, stampers and crafters. Welcome to Tina's Crafty Ink Spot. I really appreciate you joining me today. I have a quick, simple sunset portal card for you. Um, one of my team members requested this video just to show it, it's quick, it's simple, it's elegant, and we're going to jump right in. So, what I started with was some Daffodil Delight. That saves you some sponging of doing the yellow. I also have two of my layering circles. One is two and a half inches, the other one is three. And that's going to create our image piece and it's also going to create our portal frame. So let's go ahead and we're going to take the smaller, the two and a half inch, and let's die cut it. And put it on my plate, run it through my machine. Got some sort of goober on my plate there. And let's run it through real quick. My die cut machine is off to the side. circle which is also going to be our image piece and while we're die cutting we're going to go ahead and cut the portal frame so the one of them I did in gray and I really liked that but this is just um, smoky slate so you can use whatever you would like for this frame um, this other one I kind of liked it because I used a wood grain and it kind of gives it a nice touch. So we're going to bring in our wood grain. I'm going to just pick one out of here. Ah, that'll be pretty. Let's do that one. And to create this, what you'll do is I have a magnetic plate. If you do not have a magnetic plate, just use uh, your sticky notes. Your um, uh, post-it notes what we'll do is we'll put our first one down this is where a magnetic platform comes in so handy you're just gonna kind of even it up the best you can it's not gonna show if it's slightly off but like I said if you don't have a magnetic plate just take one of your post-it notes and hold it into place but mine's magnetic so I'm going to run that through. Alrighty. And there is our portal. And it's going to fit right around there. Just perfect. Alright. So let's set this aside. Save your, save your piece here. You can always use it for something else. So let's go ahead and move on to our image piece. So we'll set this aside. Now take. We'll bring in Sticky Note Kitty. Take a post-it note, and if you have grid paper, it kind of helps you uh, lay it straight. But we're going to kind of do uh, the rules of thirds here. So we're, we're going to have our, our sun here, our image, which we're going to be using the waves of inspiration. This comes out March 1st, I believe. You're going to really want this. Um, it's a beautiful um, stamp set along with it's got wave dies and um, it's even got uh, greetings and clouds and the waves. Um, what I will tell you about this suite of products, just so you know, the beautiful paper that is going to come with this, I think I showed it the other day, the beautiful paper the embellishments and the foil I believe that comes with this is only going to be why supplies last 
this stamp set may, I'm assuming, going to come out. I'm just assuming. Don't tie me to it. But I will bet this will come out in the new annual catalog. But the paper and the embellishments I know are going to be limited. So if you want them, I suggest getting them. Um, you're definitely going to want the paper. It's absolutely amazing. It looks like... Uh, uh, I don't have it on hand right with me, but you know that ink or that paint pouring technique where they pour paint and they add oils and things to make bubbles? That's what that paper... It, it's just stunning. I've used it on some other videos or I also have a post on my blog that goes over this suite of products. You're really going to want to check it out. Okay, anyway, enough sales. You know I don't like to do sales in my videos, so let's move on. I'm going to line this up on on the grid marks of my paper here. This is my um, Stamparatus grid paper. I only needed a small bit of paper here to do this. What I'm going to do is I want to lay, I'm going to pick a line, and I'm going to say I'm not going directly in half, I'm coming down just maybe one or two. So the bottom of my circle is really about right there. So you're just coming down just a little bit. And you're going to lay that straight across there. Let's bring in our pumpkin pie. We're going to bring in a three-quarter inch punch. We're going to take another sticky note, and on the sticky part, we're going to create. We're going to cut it out. I'd say a three-quarter inch or even a half-inch circle would work. Um, five eighths, whatever you have, and you put it into your punch with the so that you're stamping or cutting the sticky so that it'll have sticky on it. So we're just going to punch that out. And we're going to, since our image is going to go right here, we're going to do a law of thirds again. And we're just going to kind of set our sun. How about right there? I think that looks great. There's no right or wrong. Okay, but you do want to know that your image, you want to pay attention to what side of the sheet your image is going to be on. Now, one of these... I did the sun farther off to the left away from my image and one of them I did the sun a little closer to the image so it's kind of your own preference okay personally out of these two I like the one that's offset to the left but it's your per personal you know, preference then what we have is we have some pumpkin pie ink and a spun, uh, sponge dauber. We're going to ink that up. We're going to go right along the edge here. And start off of it. And just go right along the edge. It doesn't take much. Go up a little bit on the sides. Not a lot. You're creating your horizon. Okay. So then I'm going to come along the side just a little and I'm just going to kind of drag my ink across a little just to kind of give it some streaks. Go along the edge here a little bit. Just a tiny bit around the sun because that will make that sun kind of a highlighted yellow. Okay, darken up the edge here. Kind of just creating a sunset. Most of your dark is going to be on the edges and right along this horizon. Okay. Drag your... Mine's kind of falling apart. It's old. Just going to drag it across just a little bit to create some streaks. Okay. Now you're going to take up your post-it note. Okay. Look at that. How beautiful that is. Now let's reverse it. But you want to leave just a small, small... Let me see if I can show that on the film. When you reattach it, leave yourself a small, small bit of the ink. And that's kind of going to give you a blending transition there. Okay? So you've got a little bit of it showing. 
Now you're going to go right over it again and do your streaks across the side off the edge. But we want to leave a kind of a sun ray coming right here, okay? So don't go into there, just stay off to the side. You can do your little streaks. This is a very quick and elegant little card to me. Your darkest part is going to be right here on your horizon. Okay, now I'm going to touch up just, just dab just a little bit around that sun. It's just going to kind of give it a little bit of shadow. And then when you pick up your sun, you pick up your stick. Look at there, you have a sun. Now you're going to bring in, we're done with our ink. We're basically almost done with this. Well, actually, you know what I'm going to do before I add the white ocean, because when you, if you have a white gel pen or a white painter like I had, and you try to stamp over it, it's really going to show. So you want to do your white glass. So let's bring in our image of this cool little pumpkin. We're going to bring in our stamparatus. And then we're going to put our magnet off to one side because our pelican's going here. <coughs> we want to line them up off of it, but we want our full pelican image on there. So kind of the rule of thirds again here. So we might bring them down just a little here. Pick it up. Let's just use regular memento ink. Ink it up really good. Let's go ahead and stamp in. I'm going to stamp that one more time so I get some nice dark accents on those wood pillars. I'm not going to really see a lot of it because we're going to black it out. Let me grab a um, wipe for my stamp. But what we're going to do is we're going to black it out with the lightest get your your light basic black um, uh, stamping blend and what that will do is it's not going to totally darken it out because it's going to you're going to have a little bit where you can kind of see the details of the image and so we're going to use our light um, base, basic black and then you're just going to color in your image And since it's the light basic black, you're still going to see the accents of the black ink. I kind of didn't touch his legs here because, you know, he's going to have a little bit of sunset coming through the gap there in his legs. him in. So we still have a silhouette image, but we also have a silhouette image that you can see some detail through. All right, then we have finished our image except for adding the waves. So I'm going to set this aside. 
bring in your white gel pen or like I use I think you've seen this on my page before these it's a myosin acrylic painter it's just it's like a gel pen but it's acrylic paint and it's um, since it is a paint it has to be shake, shaken out really well and then I usually kind of get it flowing off to the side because it's got a depressing, and you depress the tip and the ink comes out. And you get it shook up really well. There we go. So we only need some really kind of random. And it's going to not be stark white, but it's going to. And you just kind of know it doesn't have to be uniform. Because you kind of just got some sun rays going here. I'm going back over them a little bit. So I got a little bit brighter white going here. And there we go. We have our accented waves there. I'm going to bring that up for you to see. See there? It just adds a little bit of something, something. I'll let that dry a second, and then I actually am going to bring in my Wink of Stella. Make sure that's nice and dry. But I'm going to put a little bit of Wink on the sun. We want it shimmering like it's a sunset. And then we're going to lightly go over a few of those little white hash marks we made. And that's going to make your water shimmer right where the sun is beaming down. We are done with our image. So now what we want to do, bring in our card base. Our card base is four and a quarter by eleven and scored at five and a half. I usually have my bone holder, but I like that to So what we'll do here, we're gonna position it and make sure that you bring in maybe what did I do with our little anyway, we got a oh there it is and make sure that's going to fit you know kind of squared on your sheet so let's go ahead and put our image down I'm just going to use regular glue you can use whatever adhesive you like I like glue you know that and you kind of want to just make sure that your horizon is level with the top of your card. Pardon me if I put my head in here. Make sure that's level. And there we go. We got our image down. I'm going to put a little bit of glue on here. Which side do we want to use? Kind of like this one. I'm just going to put a light coat of glue on here. And we'll put it around our image. Look at that. Fits right on there. We're going to bring in our classic matte dots. You can use gray ones, you can use black ones. I'm just going to go ahead and use black ones that will go with the black out of my image. And the easiest way to get these to kind of be even is we're going to do the top. Tell me. The bottom. And we'll do each side. And you can kind of pick you know, right along your horizon there. Put the other one straight across. And then add your ones in the middle and that kind of just makes them all even. You can eyeball it a little bit better. And voila, you have your porthole. Well, I've got a little bit of my putty on there. There we go. And now for the greeting, we are going to bring in our, our dot. 
daffodil again. And I really like this. You're totally awesome. So let's do that one. Stamparatus so that I can stamp more than once because we're going to be using uh, uh, our Versamark. Let's put our sheet in here. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm going to go ahead and just use this area here. And I'm going to try to square that up close to the bottom. Now you'll want to use your Versamark, your white emboss powder. And I would suggest that you use an anti-static pouch or powder, whatever you have. And keeps your embossing powder where you want. And let's go ahead and create our label. Ink it up really well. I like to do mine twice so that I have a nice thick coat of embossing powder on there. That's good. Okay. Set this aside. I'm just going to use my sheet here to catch my embossing powder. I love these little grid sheets. Embossing powder on there nice and thick. Kind of hard to see on there, but you'll be able to see any powder where it doesn't belong. Let's go ahead and heat set that. my powder back in my container before I blow it all over the room here with the heat gun. I know, you guys have been there, you know you've done it. I've done it more than once. I know better. Sometimes I like to warm it from the bottom. Sometimes, you know, some people say it'll make it melt better, uh, to me it does, but... if you want it. I usually just use my trimmer because I want to cut straight. Side down just a hair. Now you're going to bring your sheet back. You're going to take your sponge dauber. And I probably need to trim that bottom just a little bit. I might be able to do that with scissors. Let's try that. I want a little more uniform here. There we go. Now we're going to 
bring in our sponge dumb room. We're only gonna sponge part of it at the bottom here. Go about maybe halfway. Is it darker at the bottom? It's, it's really kind of looks cool on the card because it just pulls it all together. And now see that looks like it's on there. So you're just going to grab a Kleenex. And it's emboss resist. Just wipe it off of that white. It'll come right off. And you have. Doesn't that look neat? Love it. Okay, now we're going to bring our card in. And I really want to do that with dimensionals. And when I made these cards, um, okay, I'm going to own it right away. I took the card out to show it to my husband. And by the time I got it out to the living room to show him, I had put a fingerprint on it. I don't know how I got ink on it, but I had a fingerprint, ink fingerprint. And I was <laughs> I'm like, oh my gosh, I did, did this really simple card and ruined it with an ink fingerprint. Well, his idea was to put a coordinating strip on it that would hide my finger strip. Um, finger uh, kind of thing. So you know what, we're gonna do that because when I did it on the cards, I actually really liked how it turned out. This is the one I did a fingerprint on up at the top. I was holding it and I must have had ink or something on my hand. So I really liked how that kind of turned out. So we're just gonna add a little accent strip to ours. And we're gonna do the same thing we did on here, I'm only going to probably make, let's do about, mm, maybe a little over, I don't know, three-eighths inch maybe. It doesn't need to be wide, you just want to get a little bit of accent. You could go as much as just under a half if you wanted. I'm going to go ahead and cut that. Now a little strip. We're going to do the same thing we did with the label here. We're just going to ink up my dauber a little bit. We're going to take and do one edge, one side. And you just hold it and run your dauber right on the edge like that. The knife. And now I'm, all I'm going to do is kind of blend it right down the middle there. Kind of evens it out a little bit. Okay, now. I'm going to put it on the bottom. So all I'm going to do is put a little bit of glue here on the bottom of my card. And I want the shaded side down on mine, so I'm just gonna line it up right on the bottom of the card there. And since it's glue, I can just touch the edge and make sure it's on there even. There we go. Pair of snips here. I like snipping from the back so I can see better. And voila, there you are. Isn't that fun? Fun and easy. And just wanted to get a video out to you. Thank you to my, my teammate for requesting it. And I hope you have a very, very happy stampin' day and stay safe, stay safe out there and thanks for joining me. Bye bye.